Welcome to this episode where we're going to have a small conversation about subject and verb agreement. Remember, at the very start of our semester and our time together and our videos, if you're watching through them in order, I mentioned that a sentence is built up of three simple things. A subject, a verb, and a direct object. Something that does something to something. Well, our first two of those, the subject and the verb, have to agree with each other in the sentence to make sense. If you do plural, you need a plural verb. If you do a singular noun, you need a singular verb. Okay? That way our brains understand what is being communicated to us. So let's dive in and take a look at our standard slide deck and see what we can learn from it. Subject and verb agreement. Remember way back in the very beginning of our course, we talked about the three main components of a sentence. There's a subject, a verb, the subject does something, and then a direct object to something. Well, when we are doing our subjects and verbs, we have to make sure they agree with each other. And in the English language, we make sure they agree in both number and person, singular or plural, and everything has to refer to each other. So. There are 10 or 12 rules here we'll go over very quickly. They're easy to understand. We start off simple. A simple singular subject, example here, she, bill, or car, takes a singular verb, is, goes, or shines. Whereas a plural subject takes a plural verb. Here's some examples. The list of items is on the desk. List is singular, so is is a singular verb. If you know that list is the subject, you have to choose is. All right, so a subject comes before a phrase beginning with of, and we know of is a preposition. It's a prepositional phrase. Make sure that your verb refers back to the actual subject, not the contents of the prepositional phrase. So in this case, our incorrect sentence is a bouquet of yellow roses lend color and fragrance to the room. The mistake is, Lend is matching roses when it should match back to bouquet. Bouquet is the subject, so we need our singular verb lens. When we have two singular subjects and we connect them by either or, neither nor, or just plain or, it takes a singular verb. Okay? Aunt or uncle is one, nor Carmen is Kiana or Casey is all singular connected by that or and see here we use the correlative conjunction correctly neither nor either or okay. however when you have either or neither nor or or in a sentence and we mix singular and plural in our comparisons the verb agrees with the noun or pronoun closest to it so bowl singular goes singular, plates plural go plural. Okay. It can cause problems, as we see down here. Here's our awkward sentence. We have three things we're comparing. Neither she, my friends, nor I am going to the festival. Oh man, what do I need to make this sentence more understandable? This is technically correct because we have added all these together and am, the verb, agrees with the closest one to it, I. Try to rewrite the sentence. <laughs> if it doesn't work, get out your tools, hack it up, and put it back together again. Neither she, I, nor my friends are going. Friends, plural, are, plural. Or you can say she, my friends, and I are not going. We move the negative from the front of the sentence to the second part. Okay. Make sense? Good. Let's move on. When we have two or more subjects connected by an and, we use a plural verb. A car and a bike are. Exceptions when the compound actually performs as a singular noun. A okay. breaking and entering is a legal term, so it's just a singular thing, is 
bed and breakfast is a term that's combined as a compound noun, so it acts as a singular, and we need a singular verb. Wow, the English language is so confusing. Dealing with separation. Sometimes we add things like parenthetical phrases or other thoughts between our subject and our verb, and we increase that distance, and our brain has to work harder to keep up. We need to make sure that we refer back to the singular or plural subject when this happens. Politician, separation, verb. Okay, has to go back here. As well, excitement is our subject. Here is our verb. It's separated, so we need to make sure they match. Parentheses are never part of the subject. It's an additional thought. It's something that gives extra meaning to the sentence, but it's not critical. So we could say Joe was. Singular, singular. Again, if it seems awkward, rewrite the sentence. Our false subjects, okay, beginning with here, there, it, whatever. The true subject in these sentences always follows the verb. My guidance to you is always rewrite the sentence to get rid of those false subjects because they're the bane of technical writing. Here we need to make sure that our subject, which is actually hurdles, matches our verb. Hurdle is, keys are. You would rewrite this to say, four hurdles are there to jump. A high hurdle is there to jump. The keys are here. Make sense? Distance. We always use a singular verb with distances, periods of time, sums of money, when they are considered a unit. Three miles is, five years is, ten dollars is. But in the case where ten dollars were scattered on the floor, we mean that ten one dollar bills were scattered around, and in that case they are plural. When a word indicates a portion, a lot, majority, sum, etc., we reverse we undo a rule that we talked about already. And then we are guided by the noun after of. Whew, man. So, in these examples down below, a lot has disappeared. Well, has refers to pi. A lot have disappeared. Have, in this case, refers back to pies. It is in our prepositional phrase. Same thing with the rest of these examples. When we have a collective noun, and here's some examples of them, group, jury, family, audience, population, you have to determine what your intent is when you write the sentence. Okay? It may be singular or plural. All of my family has arrived, or all of my family have arrived, depending on whether you want to refer to the units of the collective noun as singular or plural. Most of the jury is or are a third of the population was or were not in favor of the bill it makes sense probably not clear as mud uh, but that's why we have rules you can always go back rewatch this you can look at our book you can look it up online and it is on you to do that Sherlock Holmes style you need to figure out what's going on here is some references for this slide deck other places you can look for help and guidance Google the term subject-verb agreement if you're confused. Look in the index of your book for subject-verb agreement. Uh, but make sure that your writing lives up to the standard that we're trying to set. And we're on to the end. So, as an example of what we just talked about, the final leaf, adding some other phrases between our subject and verb, sensing the oncoming blizzard, falls to the ground in surrender. Falls must refer back to leaf. Singular, singular. How fun. So, we've reached the end of our slide deck. Let's stay tuned to see what I have for final comments and our exciting conclusion to subject and verb agreement. Wow, there were quite a few rules in there, right? I think I counted at least 12 because there were some A's and B's, and some of them contradicted each other depending on how the writing was constructed further on. It's very simple when we have a simple sentence with a simple non-compound subject and an easily identifiable verb. When our writing starts to get more complex, as it does very quickly in the vein of technical writing, 
we need to make sure that we have matches across both number and person in our subjects and verbs. So, roll these tools together. As I always say, stick them in your toolbox, and let's strive to become better technical writers because of this. This is the end of our talk for this time, short conversation. Professor B out, and stay tuned for next episodes.